check with Bijou first? <laughs> that okay with you? Yeah. It's good I'm talking to wedding planners. Uh, hopefully you will come and visit us. This is a magnificent sanctuary. We do have a lot of weddings that come through here. Hopefully you will come and see us sometime when you're in San Francisco. This congregation uh, boasts many prominent congregants whose families are still with us, among them the, the families of, of Levi Strauss, who came west. Uh, and uh, some of the great banking families in California. We're mostly a German-Jewish congregation. Uh, I am the sixth cantor in, in the congregation's history, uh, which is really wonderful. The, the cantors here have had longevity, uh, and they've served uh, as pastors, as well as musical uh, directors. So in the Jewish religion, the cantor is a member of the clergy. I do perform weddings in partnership with the rabbis and also alone. So it depends on the, you know, the choice of the uh, couple that's being married. Uh, when there is a cantor and a rabbi together, usually the couple has met with the rabbi. I'm flexible, <laughs> I'll do either. In the reform community, we respect Jewish law, but we don't necessarily follow it to the letter. Nowadays, in the reform movement, we use a much more liberal version of that, and it more reflects wedding vows. There are other rituals that occur sometimes before the actual ceremony. Uh, there's study sessions, uh, there's something where the, the groom, you know, the groom and his friends will go into a room and have what's called a tish. That's the other thing you need to know, is that very often the bride and the groom will be from different backgrounds, sometimes from different faiths. And it's kind of a mystical thing where the bride encircles the groom and weaves kind of a web around him that makes him hers. And then they want to make it egalitarian, so there's three from the bride and three from the groom, and then they both circle kind of dosy do -si do The chuppah is the symbol of the Jewish home. It's open on all sides, and also the, the top of the chuppah represents the God's hovering presence. And the chuppah is very often elaborately decorated, or sometimes very, very simple. In the past, there was a year that separated those ceremonies. It was sort of a, a year of betrothal and then there was the nuptials. There's a lot of classical music that can be played, but anything that has an association with another religion really should be avoided. And it has been kind of an unwritten law that you do not play Here Comes the Bride. Da, 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 because that is from Lohengrin of Wagner. Wagner was a notoriously rabid anti-Semite. And just in case there's one Holocaust survivor or member of the family of a Holocaust survivor in the more traditional community, the couple has actually fasted all day. And spending the few moments alone afterwards, which is called yichud, which means together, is a way for them to share their first meal together. Probably smashing glass was a sound of joy. Um, there is one rabbinic story that uh, a certain rabbi was distressed by all the gaiety that was going on after the wedding and he smashed the glass so that people would remember that the world is still a broken place. And it's kind of like the Catholic Church. I mean, we don't require conversion, but we do require that the couple take a course in Judaism, that they agree to maintain a Jewish home and raise Jewish children. And interfaith marriages are here to stay and we need to deal with it. I would like to see um, some restrictions on photography during the ceremony. You're supposed to be concentrating on the message of the ceremony, you know? And uh, that's just my personal preference. I'm sure there are rabbis who don't mind the flash bulbs, but I find it uh, rather intrusive. Oh, there's one other thing I should tell you about. There's a little ceremony called a bedeckin, which very often occurs before the wedding itself. Jacob worked seven years to marry Rachel, but the father-in-law hoodwinked him and gave him the older daughter first. And Jacob didn't notice that he was marrying Leah. And so he had to work another seven years in order to pay off his debt to marry Rachel. That's what happens. We have this little ceremony just to make sure that the bride is who she's supposed to be. If there's a cantor, there'll be a lovely uh, rendition of the seven wedding blessings. I include family members in that so that after I finish chanting in Hebrew, I'll have Maybe family, you know, I'll ask the bride and groom if they want family members to say the blessings in English, so we include them. We don't usually recite wedding vows in the Jewish ceremony, but the couple can ask to do that. When I've done an interfaith ceremony and it turned out that the father of the groom was a Methodist minister, 
I felt like he should be included, and I had him read a section of the Song of Songs. And the groom was Portuguese or Brazilian, I don't know, one of those. And, and um, they had a friend who spoke French, and he got up in the middle of the ceremony and recited the Song of Songs in French. We do not light that unity candle, however, I will tell you right now. I mean, that's not a, it's not a Jewish thing. Chorus of song, the chorus of song.